Hello, and welcome back. I am Johanna, and as I say before every single video, I have no credentials. I am just a student in DP1. So what I wanted to tell you guys is that if you look at my channel, you'll see that I only have biology videos, or I only have two, I just started. But I decided I was going to do math videos now because I make this in the order that I need to study. And I had a um, bio mini mock today, so we'll see how that went. But now my next thing is math, so I'm going to do math. And then when I don't have mini mocks anymore, then I will start doing more regular and catch up on everything else that I haven't uploaded on my channel yet, which is a lot, obviously. Um, yes, so we're doing chapter 6 because my specific test is on chapter 6 and 7. Luckily for me and for you guys, this actually happens to be, I, I would personally say, the easiest chapter in the entire book, probably. So, uh, well, I don't really know what to say about that, but hopefully you'll enjoy and learn, maybe. Or maybe you already know this stuff. The first thing you have to know is about what quantitative data is. So quantitative data refers to all information that can be counted, and it's always a number. For instance, the amount of the amount of candy you got for Easter. Quantitative data can be discrete or continuous. Discrete data is particular and can only take particular values, but there may be an infinite number of these values. So usually this wouldn't be a fraction or be written in decimal form or anything like that. Some examples of discrete data are number of siblings, because you can't have half a sibling. Number of pets, again, you can't have half a pet or a quarter of a pet. Number of rooms in your house, same logic here. And shoe size, now depending on where you're from, shoe sizes may be in decimal points. But it's still a specific size. It's not like you have, I have 7.3456789, whatever. No one has that. So it's still a particular value. Continuous is not restricted and can be things like kg, so that's weight, or liters. For instance, liters of milk um, or time. Because you can have... 1.3 seconds, and you can be way 54.5, You these are all possibilities, and they're not particular numbers. According to the book, reliability, or for data to be reliable, is when you can repeat the data collection process and obtain similar results. So essentially, you should be able to repeat the experiment or the investigation, the survey, whatever you're doing, many times, and you should still get the same results. Then your data is reliable. Your data is sufficient if there is enough data available to support your conclusions. So that would be if you're trying to claim that all females do something, you cannot just ask one female or something along those lines. There has to be a sufficient amount so that you can have representative data, which means that they represent the whole population well. And there are two factors which can cause unreliable data. This is missing data and errors in handling data. Missing data refers to if either the lack of response to your surveys or questionnaires, or because it's not possible to survey the actual thing you're, well, not survey, but it's not possible to get the data you are looking for. In errors of handling data, uh, it might be that you entered the data incorrectly, or that some of your final results that you obtained from the data have been affected by whatever issue. Maybe you did a calculation wrong, so on and so forth. The book defines population as consists of every member in the group that you want to find out about. And a sample is the subset of the population that will give you information about the population as a whole. So, for instance, if you wanted to find out about the Swedish population, 
that would be a lot of people to ask. There are 10 million Swedes, so that would be a lot of people. But instead, you can take one person from every thousand Swedes and then get sort of an average or a general answer for how the Swedish population thinks and acts in relation to whatever you are studying. Now, when choosing a sample, you have to make sure to be unbiased. Biases occur when you take a sample of a population where some members of that population are not represented. Again, if we, we can go with uh, looking at a Swedish population, but you only ask white people in that Swedish population, then obviously you might draw conclusions that are not accurate to everyone. You are misrepresenting lots of people in that case. So there are a few sampling techniques that are crucial to make sure that you are not biased. The first technique is the convenience sampling. This is the easiest method and essentially all you do is choose members of the population who are easily accessible or readily available. So this could be anyone you walk by, maybe your classmates, maybe people you know. The second technique is Simple random sampling. Each member of the population has an equal chance of being selected. And you just choose by drawing names for a hat or a random generator, that type of thing. The third technique for sampling is systematic sampling. So you take the members of a population and you put them in a list, and according to a random starting point and a fixed interval, you just pick the people in a row. So that would be, there are a hundred people I want to survey, I put them all on a list and I take every ten. The fourth technique is the, is the stratified sampling. This involves dividing the population into smaller groups known as strata. According to the book, this is. Um, the strata are formed based on members' shared characteristics. You then choose a random sample from each stratum and put them together to form your sample. So this would essentially be saying, uh, for example, if you do sexualities, you would take uh, some straight people, some gay people, some lesbians, some bisexuals, whatever and you take a few from each to get your sample. The fifth technique is the quota sampling. This is the same like stratified sampling, but you take a size from each stratum, uh, which is in proportion to the size of the stratum. So if there are 10% Swedish people at my school, then I only take 10, then only 10% of my sample is Swedish. That was it for chapter 6.1, sampling, and now it's time for a quiz. This is essentially a little summary of what we've done today, and to see that you truly understand what has been taught in this video. So, discrete versus continuous. Here are two examples, and I will give you some time to answer after they have been written on the screen. Okay, so I was very random when I wrote this. I didn't even remember that I wrote that, but length of armpit hair and number of windows in your kitchen or in kitchens. I don't know why it just says in kitchen, but yeah. There are also two questions on sampling techniques. The first one is you sample random people you walk by on the street. Which technique is that? And the second one is, sadly it got cut off the screen, but what it's supposed to say, question two, is there are a thousand people at your gym and you put them into a list and you take every 50th person. What type of sampling technique is that? Now is the time to answer. Feel free to pause the video and just take as much time as you need. Um, these are fairly simple questions, I think, so it should go pretty quick. And I will just start answering very soon. The first answer is continuous because 
armpit hair can be measured in centimeters and all this stuff. And it doesn't have to be specifically like 2 centimeters or 3 centimeters. It could be 3.4 centimeters, 3.56 centimeters. And number of windows in the kitchen is discrete because you can't have one and a half window in your kitchen or 1.34 windows in your kitchen. You have one or two or three. Question one for sampling was convenience sampling because this is just the convenient this is just convenient the people who are around you who walk by you on the street that's completely random it's just whoever walks by it's convenient to you the second one is systematic sampling because you're putting them in the list and you're choosing every fifth no every 50th person and that was it for the quiz yay if you got those right, it seems like you will be all good for chapter 6.1. Feel free to subscribe, like, and comment, and follow me on Instagram at Johanna Frenert. And that's pretty much it. Goodbye. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope it was helpful.